as part of my JCI travels that I've been involved with, uh, I've often ended up going to to Europe quite a bit. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make this year's uh, European conference over in Ulu, uh, but maybe next year in Denmark, I'll be able to sort of give it a go. I'm still on the fence about trying to go to Taiwan or not. It's a long way to travel, possibly quite by myself, and I'm being put off. But yeah, well, I'll, I'll see. <laughs> maybe. Who knows? I still need to make a decision about that. Um, but one of the big questions that I get asked, not just from uh, Europeans, but by other people around the world, especially in regards to, to sort of Brexit, besides what the hell is going on in your country at the moment, <laughs> is uh what ha what again why did brexit happen in the first place that's that's a very much common one but the other one is uh do you think that brexit is going to get reversed now we have seen very very clearly in the polls that dissatisfaction with brexit the realization that actually this is what was promised that you know sort of the leave campaign lied you know I, I suppose it's better later than never that you know people are finally coming around to that realization, and of course the fact that the Leave campaign, when you look at their their messaging and the literature that they put out, they in reality put forward a very very soft version of Brexit, a very soft version of Brexit. Remember, of course, Daniel Hanan, infamous uh, Sky News, which we quote all the time when asked by someone from the Remain campaign that, you know, a vote for leave does mean leaving the single market and customs union. What was Daniel Hanan's response? He, and constantly pushed the narrative that we would never leave the single market and customs union because only a fool would leave the single market and customs union. Quickly changed his tune about that multiple times. And to be honest, where he is now, uh, I couldn't really say because he's he constantly changes his mind about where and where um, the UK should be. But we are seeing bigger and bigger polls on this. And this is sort of building gradually over time, constantly, constantly, constantly. Um, and eventually we will see a complete reversal in this. But while that is also happening, one thing that should also be happening is, of course, talks and, uh, you know, politicians. Like, where do they stand? We need to have, you know, conversations about Brexit. As I've always said, this parliament, you ain't going to get it because this current crop of conservatives currently in charge are ultimately most responsible for Brexit, but also in their ideological, um, you know, echo chamber that Brexit is like the best thing since sliced bread and that it is the only thing that they must do because they want to pursue these grand ideological, um, crazy free market fundamentalist um, policies, which Liz Truss did, which again, you know, crashed the economy, destroying the UK pensions industry, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so we are seeing that. And this has surprised a lot of people because a lot of people thought, that the polls as they are now would not be this, like this for at least for at least until about uh, 2028, maybe even getting into 2030. So the polls are radically in our favor. And of course, when you look at sort of the experts when they're talking about this, about sort of these changing attitudes, this then now opens the airspace to have these conversations. And in the next parliament, the more the Tories are defeated, the more likely they are then going to have be, be able to sort of talk about Brexit without, you know, the crazy voice. Or if there is, you know, that still crazy, con you know, the, that crazy conservative, then they'll just be ignored back to the sidelines, back as they used to be, back during all these, you know, during these debates. So that is something that does need to happen. But the big question is, is this, would the Conservatives ever U-turn on the EU and Brexit from their current stance? I think the answer is yes, they would. We've talked before about how you can see at the moment, every single British businesses is suffering because of, of Brexit. You look at the original reason why the Conservatives went to join the EU, or at least the common, uh, the European economic area, 
the EEC, I think it was uh, sort of known at the time, why they went to that, because British businesses were seeing all the economic benefits in Europe where it was, realized that they were losing out on a ton of competition, all this stuff. All this stuff now is coming back to them. And remember, the Conservative Party wants to be the party of business. All these businesses are now saying the same thing. Brexit is a problem. All this new red tape, all these new barriers are a problem. At what point do you think the Conservative Party, just as they did in the past, is going to U-turn on that? That is one pressure they are going to be on. The other thing, of course, is that you have a lot of people who left the Conservative Party over Brexit initially, or went undercover and just thought, well, I'm actually going to all go along with this because it seems like everyone else is going along with this. Eventually, they too will be given the airspace to break cover. Maybe not, of course, in the parliamentary party, depending on who's left, but to have people be able to sort of have those conversations in sort of conservative circles is something that we do really need to end up actually encouraging, not just having them in the Labour Party, the Lib Dems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They need to happen in the Conservative Party as well. There needs to be that really pro-EU block that says, actually, our you know our thinking on the EU and Brexit was completely wrong. It was a mistake. We want to change and reverse uh, that, uh, what we did, because the Conservative Party and Brexit are now intrinsically ever forelinked. And if that also becomes an electoral problem for them, then, of course, they are going to reverse on that as well. Now, I was going to go over this article as well in Conservative Home, but I've read it and it's not worth going over, <laughs> honestly. Uh, to the guy who wrote this article, uh, it says that the European uh, Parliament, upcoming European parliamentary elections are democratic, which is nonsense. Yes, they are democratic. But one of the things he uh, does say in this article, which is I, I do find quite interesting, is the idea that the EU is really needed for you know defensive purposes. And somehow he can really get on board with the idea of the UK and the EU sort of collectively working together for you know, greater European defence, which now comes on board with the idea of if you are okay with that and, you know, having the UK working cooperation with them on that, then where else are really Conservatives also tiptoeing around the ideas and sort of getting into? Because it wasn't too long ago where even the idea of working with the EU on defence was seen as a complete no-no-go area. That, that was, once again, ceding sovereignty or putting, you know, European, sort of UK troops under foreign command, um, even though we are in NATO. <laughs> but, um, so it is very, very slowly, I think you will start to see some slow but steady U-turns in things like this, maybe in economics, where, you know, you start to get the businesses or you know, the Conservatives sort of reapproach businesses and they hear the overwhelming uh, response of, you know, Brexit has caused in you know huge damage to our businesses. Um, this whole international trade shenanigans that you pitch the global Britain isn't really working out for us. It's incredibly hard to actually break into foreign markets and distance does still matter incredibly so much in international trade. We've got a massive trading block on our front door where we do our most, you know, prominent business, why can't we go there? So, ultimately, at the end of the day, everything does really point to the Conservatives, will eventually start to U-turn. Currently, there are some signs that aren't too many people. I mean, I think really the only open Conservative who talks about this currently, I think, is Tobias Elwood. He's been the only one shall we say, to sort of break cover. Uh, but even then, no one else has sort of joined him in those calls or anything like that. I suspect maybe there'll be more of people like him eventually down in the future, not only maybe in you know the parliamentary party, but in the non-parliamentary party as well. Maybe that does end up forming some sort of you know pro-EU block. It's, it's just if you had you know the Brexiteer block, maybe after a time, we've seen the complete smashing and obliteration of that you know, that Brexit block, 
Maybe now the pro-European bloc gets back on it. Who knows? Um, but this is definitely a lot of sort of crystal ball gazing. But I think a lot of these predictions I have made have been sort of made off of you know current realities, stuff based on the past of why the Conservatives actually you know, went to join the EU. So, like I say, let me know what you think. But I think, honestly, there is every single chance of the Conservatives eventually doing a U-turn. Maybe not within the next, you know, couple of years because they are going to be going in an even more far-right tilt by the looks of it. Um, but there you go. So, honestly, we'll see what happens in this. But this is, I can see this happening eventually, you know, down the track. And, of course, this is something that would also definitely need to happen as well for re rejoining purposes uh, to see the Conservatives become more pro-EU, or at least be that prominent, you know, force once again of, you know, pushing that within the party. So, hey, we'll see. Let me know what you think down below. And, of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.